Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Happy World Space Week, and happy 60th anniversary to NASA. Tonight I'm releasing NeoTracker, which is the first of three modules that I am splitting up from what used to be Teletrack and porting to Python. This module is focused on tracking near-Earth objects, including asteroids, comets, and spacecraft. It can read orbital elements both from JPL's Horizons system as well as FindOrb, which is a program you can use to calculate orbital elements yourself. It can read either of these, and you can select that based on file type here in this drop-down menu. You can also select telescope type. Of course, I'm still supporting the LX200 Classic, which is my telescope, but I'm now going to start supporting ASCOM for certain operations. Now, I haven't tested the ASCOM feature at all. It requires that the telescope be compatible with ASCOM's move axis method, which the LX200 Classic is not. So even though your telescope may have an ASCOM driver, that's no guarantee that it will actually be compatible with this software. It needs to be able to support the move axis method. And generally speaking, if your telescope has the ability to track at arbitrary slew rates for minor planet tracking, it should be capable of supporting that method. But you'll need to check uh, with the specifications of your own telescope to make sure. At the moment it doesn't do any kind of sanity checking to make sure that that's the case. It simply tries to issue the command and hopefully the telescope can keep up. Additionally, because this is completely untested, you are using it at your own risk if you use the ASCOM method. I have no idea if it actually works because unfortunately I don't have the hardware to test it. So I am going to need beta testers at this phase. And if you do want to beta test it again, please be advised. This is completely experimental, especially when it comes to the ASCOM feature. So do report any bugs in the comments section, and I'll try to work them out and issue patches to the software as needed. But be ready to shut it down if your telescope starts going in a direction that you don't like. So I will show you how to use the software if you're using an LX200 Classic like mine. The functionality should be pretty much the same for ASCOM, but as I haven't been able to test it, I don't really know how it's going to behave. So with the LX200 Classic, you sim simply select that as the telescope type. You enter the COM port number here, as well as your latitude and longitude. Now, I put in some approximate numbers here just for Florida, but when you fire up the program, it will actually attempt to locate you based on your IP address. Now, if you're using a VPN or some other method to mask your public IP address, then it will probably give you very wrong coordinates here, but you can enter them yourself. And if you're not online, uh, once again, you can enter your own coordinates there. Uh, so, with that said, uh, the next step is to choose the file type. So you can choose files that were uh, derived from JPL Horizons as well as FindOrb. For FindOrb, uh, it's pretty straightforward you simply export the orbital elements as a text file uh, using the ephemeris uh, functionality and saving eight line elements. For JPL Horizons, I'll demonstrate what you need to do here. So let's just Google JPL Horizons web interface and come in here to Horizons. So at this point, uh, what you need to do is change the ephemeris type to orbital elements. Use that and then you can select your target. So you can look up anything you want here. Let's just have some fun and look up the SpaceX Tesla. So you can select that as your body. Uh, leave the uh, center body alone, it should be the sun. And then change the time span to approximately when you plan to observe the object. Now, the program currently will only look at the top listed set of orbital elements. So if you're printing out multiple sets, over the course of multiple days, it will only look at the first day listed in the file, so keep that in mind. You can go ahead and export over multiple days, it's fine, but it's only going to look at the top one. Everything else can pretty much be left on default, except you need to export this as a download save file. And so at this point, you're now ready to, to generate the file, and it will download it as horizons underscore results.txt. Then you want to copy that into the directory where you have NeoTracker and open up the file. So I'm going to go ahead and select the orbital data file here. I've got Oumuamua, the first interstellar object detected. 
sitting there and uh, you can also specify offsets here. Let me explain how this works before I fire up the telescope. Uh, you can specify in arc seconds uh, an offset if the target is off-center. In the case of the LX200 Classic, it should pretty much dynamically update the pointing. In the case of ASCOM at the moment, you'll need to stop and restart the tracking with the new offset if you need it. Uh, you can also reset it to zero out all the offsets. The other thing is if you manually type in a number, it won't take that number right away until you hit the button next to the text box. So if I enter 10 arc seconds here, it's not actually going to use that until I hit E. Now that will increment it by one more arc second, um, but then it will take that number and start using it. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that and just go ahead and start stop tracking. Now you may be wondering where the connect button is. It's actually integrated into start stop tracking here. When you click start tracking it will also try to connect to the telescope. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You can hear my telescope slewing away there in the background. Sorry for the loud noise but uh, yeah it's not a terribly soft telescope. So it did go to the coordinates that uh, Oumuamua is currently at, and it is able to track on those. So that's all there is to it, pretty much. Uh, at that point, you can start taking your deep space images of various asteroids or comets as they're flying by Earth. So I think this program will be uh, quite useful, especially for LX200 Classic owners like myself, uh, where we've been pretty much left out there in terms of being able to track fast-moving near-Earth asteroids and the like. It's not a functionality built into the telescope at all. Uh, so this is available on GitHub and the link will be in the video description. So you can download it yourself. Also, you'll find in the video description a donation link if you like this software and want to see further development, please do feel free to support me there and I'll keep working on developing this software and releasing the next modules. The next one I'll be focusing on will be the joystick and video-based tracking uh, which I use to track SpaceX launches and landings and all of that. I'll be porting that to Python as well, and again, uh, attempting to support ASCOM compatible telescopes that can use the move axis method. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy the software. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all of your support. Clear skies, folks.